Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Spring 2020 Nursing Recognition event. Um, obviously, a celebration in a really different format than we were expecting just a couple of months ago. Um, to me, it seems almost impossible to think back that far. Um, it feels to me like five years since March 15th. Um, I'm sure it feels that way to some of you also. Um, and yet here we are in June, recognizing our spring graduates of the ADM program as they sort of receive their pins. So we're really excited to bring this event to you, um, even though we're just into the beginning of June and not quite uh, making it by graduation week. The students have done a tremendous amount of work to get ready for the event and we wanted to share their accomplishments with all of you. Um, a few housekeeping items as we get started. Those of you that are coming in, we're asking you to please mute yourselves um, as well as please stop your videos. We're trying really hard to not break the system and we'll have a better chance of success with that if everyone stays muted so that we can hear the speakers and if everyone stays off of video except for our speakers. I also wanna let you know that the event is being recorded. So if you are not comfortable being recorded, please go ahead and sign out of the event now and the recording will be sent out to the graduates. And so you'll be able to watch it with your graduate at a later date. So we know that this is a really unusual time and a really unusual ceremony. So I just wanna share a few quick words with the graduates before we get started. Um, I want to quickly point out that the background behind me, the, I've been practicing with virtual backgrounds all week, um, and the one that's behind me is a display of items from the Florence Nightingale Museum in London. So if you ever have an opportunity to visit, I highly recommend it. Who knew that uh, in 2020, when this was named the Year of the Nurse, that uh, this was being done in honor of the 200th anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth, that nursing would end up during this year so unexpectedly being brought to the forefront through this crazy global pandemic that we're going through right now. Whoever could have predicted that as a result, your nursing program would end in such an unusual way. I've studied resilience for a really long time as it was the focus of my doctoral work and that's getting to be quite a few years ago. And I've even developed a tool to measure resilience, but I can tell you honestly that I have never known a group of people who better exemplify this trait. The fortitude that the graduates have displayed over the past two and a half months has been absolutely extraordinary. Your flexibility, your grit and single-minded purposefulness will really serve you well as you enter this extraordinary profession during this really historic time. I, I've had several graduates ask me about pandemics. I'm like, I don't know, I've never been through a pandemic. None of us have ever been through a pandemic. So we're, we're struggling through this really challenging time all together. And particularly for you all, you've done that with an amazing sense of grace that you've shown to each other. The, the experience that you have had of lifting each other up through your struggles to balance school, work, home, unemployment, personal illnesses, family illnesses, and even family loss will really empower you in your role as a nurse moving forward. You're entering nursing at a time when Florence Nightingale's basic principles are more important than ever, and you will make your mark on the profession through this challenge of the pandemic. But based on your resilience over the last couple months, I have absolutely no doubt that CSM has prepared you well and that you will absolutely excel in your new role. So I wanted to be the first to congratulate you. I'm your mistress of ceremonies this evening. And what I'd like to do now to get us started is move to Lisa Gonzalez, who's going to be sharing some welcoming remarks with you. Good evening. We are here to celebrate the work and accomplishments of a group of pretty resilient nursing students as Dr. Polk was sharing. Your perseverance hopefully feels all worth it today as we celebrate your graduation from CSM's Associate Degree in Nursing Program and receipt of your nursing pin. Nursing graduates, you are a memorable group. I'll tell you this, if you're willing to advocate and care for your patients as passionately as I've seen you fight for question credits and points back on the test, then we can all rest assured the future of healthcare is in really good hands. Before we begin our ceremony, 
we want to take a few minutes to welcome some very special guests who have contributed to your education and the accomplishments we are celebrating today. I want to welcome and thank any members of the college's board of trustees who are with us. We appreciate your leadership, especially during this very different time. I also want to welcome and acknowledge the support of Dr. Maureen Murphy, the college president, and Dr. Eileen Abel, the vice president of academic affairs. In addition, I'd like to welcome you to the faculty and staff of the health sciences division and the nursing program. Even though they have their videos hidden to preserve precious bandwidth, their innovative thinking contributed to the success of our graduate complete the semester. Most importantly, I want to recognize the family and friends of the graduates who are joining us today. We know the last few months have not been easy. You probably hadn't seen much of your nursing graduate for almost two years, and then all of a sudden in March, they were home with you full time. Still going to class and clinical, just doing it through hours and hours and hours of Zoom. Thank you for supporting them as they worked hard to fulfill their dream. Finally, as we get started here, I wanna take a moment to acknowledge those nurses and other healthcare professionals who have worked tirelessly in response to the pandemic. Some of them giving their lives for the profession they love in order to provide the best care possible. I ask that you please join me in a quiet moment of reflection. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Professor Jeannie Hill to you as she shares her perspective on the significance of the nursing pin. So first I wanna thank the graduating class for inviting me to speak on the history of the nurse's pin. I got to do this last semester and um, I'm happy to do it again because uh, as I mentioned last semester, it was actually my graduating class that designed the pin that you guys are going to be receiving today. So. Um, I love to share the history of it and get to um, the graduating group. The nurse's pen is a symbol of our profession with a history dating back to the Maltese Cross. The nurse's pen started as a badge given to the Knights of the Order of the Hospital of St. John the Baptist, a religious order who tended to kill and wounded crusaders in the 12th century. The badge was a symbol of service to others. Initially, the badge was a Maltese cross, which was worn over one's heart. Anyone who was caring for the injured or sick wore this badge. Later in the 12th century, the badge was changed to a white Maltese cross on a red background and only Christian soldiers who were knights could wear this badge. The badge represented valor and distinguished service. The nursing badge originated in the 1860s after Florence Nightingale was awarded the Red Cross of St. George for her selfless service in caring for the injured and dying during, dying during the Crimean War. Shortly afterwards, when Miss Nightingale started the Nightingale School of Nursing at the St. Th Thomas Hospital in L London, she decided to award the most outstanding graduate nurses a badge for excellence, just as she had been awarded. The Wolverton Royal Hospital School in England was the first nursing school to award all graduates with a badge. In 1880, the badge was refined and changed to a pen. The Bellevue Hospital School of Nursing in New York City was the first to award a nursing pen to every graduate. The pen's design is unique to each school and nursing program. The associate degree nursing program that you are graduating from was started in 1979 with the first ADM pin awarded to graduates in 1981. At that time, the college's name was Charles County Community College. On July 1st, 2000, Charles County Community College's name was changed to the College of Southern Maryland. So the nursing pins for our nursing program had to change too. The nursing pin that you're receiving today was redesigned by myself along with my fellow CSM 2001 nursing program graduates. What you see on the screen is the present day pen for the College of Southern Maryland's ADN graduates. This pen symbolizes a rite of passage for you graduates into the professional world of nursing. Nurses treat the patients daily with commitment, honor, and courage. Our nursing pen is a symbol of this commitment of honor and courage to those we care for. I don't know why that showed up. Um, 
As you go forth into the world of nursing, wear your pen with pride. Today's pen will symbolize that you are a graduate of the nursing program from the College of Southern Maryland. You should always carry your pride of the pen in the nursing profession with you, especially on the hard days. You have successfully completed this program despite the unforeseen challenges of the past few months. As Dr. Polk mentioned, the resiliency that we have seen in this group of graduates has been commendable. I have witnessed resili resiliency and dedication in all of you like I have never seen before. I hope that each of you maintain that resili resiliency and dedication as you enter the nursing profession at this challenging time. I will end with one of my favorite quotes for you guys. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. I give you all my most heartfelt congratulations as you go to share your gift with the world. Congratulations. You know, it is always an honor to have a guest speaker who is one of our own. Amber Hutchins graduated from CSM in 2005 and went on to earn her BSN and MSN from Jacksonville University. She currently works in case management for Previa Health and was selected by this year's graduates to be the guest speaker. Congratulations to your family and friends. Congratulations to another successful semester for the nursing faculty. And most of all, congratulations to the graduating students. I have been absolutely honored to be asked to speak today. For those of you that do not know, I graduated from this very nursing program with some of these very faculty members. And I have come full circle to have the honor to come back and teach these young men and women. I met many of you week one and continue to be honored to teach and guide you through your entire first year. Some of you returned to me visiting me in the nursing lab for guidance, questions, or just event. I was privileged enough to offer mentorship and reassurance that it is possible to make it through this program. I'm living proof of that, and now you are too. You made it through this difficult program. You attended lectures, you read chapters, went to clinicals, passed checkoffs, and spent hours upon hours of studying, mostly panicking, but we'll call it studying. You accomplished the goal, but you need to remember what you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. And now, after all that, it's time to set new ones. You're about to jump headfirst into the nursing community, a community that can be harsh, abrasive, and headstrong, a community that will push you harder even when you feel you can go no further. Because despite being harsh or headstrong, Nursing is filled with compassion, strength, courage, and tenacity, and we know you'll be pushed to your edge over and over again throughout your career, and you will survive. For the 18th straight year, nursing has been rated as the number one most ethical and honest profession in America. 85% of polled Americans felt that our ethical standards are high or very high. 85%. Nursing ranked higher than physicians, dentists, and pharmacists. So what does that say to you? What it says to me as a registered nurse is that I have the ability to engage and escort people through very difficult times in their lives. Sometimes it is their own illness or the illness of a loved one, but they have that trust in me to provide them with the effective and accurate care. But this honor comes with work. We have to continue to work together to maintain that respect from the community and from our peers. We have to continue to ask questions, research, and learn about the most up-to-date and effective evidence-based nursing. You've probably heard that change is impossible to avoid in nursing, and there are no truer words ever spoken. Change is the only given in this profession. Ever since you have begun nursing school, since you even began your fourth semester, the landscape of nursing has changed. The emergence of advanced practice nursing and other nursing roles, as well as technological advances, has changed the way nursing operates as a whole in a very short period of time. Advanced practice nursing has brought a new dynamic to healthcare by assuming an independent role in improving access to affordable and reliable healthcare serving underserved communities and taking into consideration with renewed vigor social determinants of health so many factors impact health Lawrence coming to Richmond not, Thursday it's really? not just it's reliant on money 
geography, race, right. education, community, biology, oh, and so. access to affordable, healthy food are just some determinants that impact healthcare so dramatically. Advanced practice nursing is helping to break down these barriers and meet communities and individuals where they are to ensure an improved overall outcome in the health of Americans. New nursing roles have emerged over the years to accommodate the ever-changing landscape. We finally embrace the old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Virtual care nursing, informatics nursing, care management, and health coaching are a few examples of these new exciting platforms in which the nursing profession is shaping the future. The focus of healthcare has begun moving from illness-based to wellness-based. That shift pushes for offensive treatment or the prevention of disease versus providing defensive care and treating the preventable problem. This dramatically improves quality of life, healthcare expenditure, and overall population health. The opportunities are endless in this career, and I cannot think of another profession that has the flexibility and broad reach as nursing does. Despite all the positive changes in the world of nursing, there are also negative changes. In 2014, we were confronted with an appearance of Ebola in the United States. We adapted and found ways to isolate and prevent the massive spread of devastating disease, all while we were not educated or equipped to manage it in the US. Yeah. Nurse, nurses were aware that they weren't prepared, yet they still pushed through to provide care to the first known cases of Ebola in the US. Someone had to care for the patients impacted, and knowing the risks, they continued to do what they needed to do with what they had to work with. Ultimately, two American nurses contracted the disease. They both recovered, but the risk they placed themselves in was necessary, brave, and selfless. Fast forward, December 2019, a new form of pneumonia-like illness was quickly traveling throughout China, moving international over December and early January. By January 21st, 2020, 33 days after the first Chinese case presented, the first U.S. case presented in Washington state. To think back to the Ebola issue, even though we here in the U.S. were not well versed in the management of that disease, we had international resources that could be tapped into for insight and assistance. With this new disease, however, there was no help, limited knowledge, and a whole lot of fear. The ability for news to travel and information to be shared left the world reeling in response to a new devastating form of a virus that was proving to be highly contagious, viciously virulent, and terrifying. So what do nurses do when everyone is mandated to be hunkered down at home for fear of this new reality? They get up, they put on their scrubs, comfortable nursing shoes, and get to work, just like every other day. Were we scared? Yeah, we still are. Scared for the health of these patients with an ever-present internal dialogue of, am I going to get sick? Will I take this home to my loved ones? Do I know enough to make a difference in combating a disease that no one knows much about? But despite that dialogue, nurses put on that personal protective equipment, get in there, and do their jobs. But that's not all. Nurses are always overachievers, right? Nurses found ways to employ other avenues of care, use of telemedicine, phone calls, care management, social work, navigating community resources, and perhaps most importantly, community education. Scraping at every resource to ensure patients had what they needed because that is what nurses do. They are compassionate, impactful, resourceful, and innovative. And you, all of you, are now part of that community. Again, I want to reiterate how proud I am of all your individual successes. How proud I am that you came together as a community of students to propel yourself to your goals. You supported and cheered each other on. Where one student lacked knowledge, another was there to help you understand. Where one student lacked confidence, another was there to look you in the eyes and tell you, you've got this. Nursing school is a very tiny community that prepares you mentally for the real nursing community. So as you move forward into your nursing career, don't forget those who supported you. The best way to honor and recognize this support is to pay it forward to others. Maya Angelou said it best. I've learned that people will forget what you've said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Congratulations.
Thank you so much, Amber. That was really amazing to share your perspective, having now lived through the last six months working with patients and giving our graduates some ideas of how they can start their careers and move forward with all their challenges. So, and now the time you've all been waiting for, an opportunity to come up on stage and receive your pin, hug your faculty. Oh, wait, well, sort of. Um, I did hear though, I wanna share with, um, I did hear from a couple of the graduates that um, the pins have started arriving in the mail. So hopefully that bodes well for the rest of you and that's a good thing. So when you do get your pin in the mail, please make sure someone pins it on you and put those pictures of yourself with your actual pins out there on social media for everyone, our family at CSM to be able to see them. Um, but right now, we're going to get started in a slightly different way. And before we move forward with our virtual pinning, I do want to acknowledge the Nursing Recognition Committee. They were the students who were instrumental in leading the organization and development of your ceremony. They planned the original ceremony with all of the graduates input voting on each of the aspects of the ceremony. And then they very quickly did an absolutely phenomenal job of transitioning to our Zoom version that we have today. So they are listed on your program, but I want to acknowledge Sarah Crane, Sabrina Myers, Lauren Parker, Lori Rushworth, Sherry Templeman, and Christine Vermillion. I also want to acknowledge our technical support for today um, in the form of Andre Davis, who's also listed on your program. He's our health sciences simulation operations and technical support specialist, a very long title for a lot of different jobs that he does, uh, most importantly, supporting us in almost every way that we can think of when no matter what the technology question. So Andre, we really appreciate your help um, and being here with us today. The faculty pinners who have been selected by the students are Dr. Sarah Cano, Professor Linda Hamill, Dr. Eden Kahn, Professor Lynn Kennedy, Professor Annette Ragland, and Professor Deb Rutledge. They will be reading the student names as we share the student's own individually designed slide with you. Feel free, as you have been, to use our chat feature to share your thoughts and congratulations as we run through our next section. Congratulations, nursing students. First one we have is Dorothy Almany. Sarah Archer. Brooke Baggerly. Chanel L. Bundy. Melissa A. Cavan. Camille N. Chambers. Congrats, Camille. Hey guys, if I can please remind you to stay muted. I don't want to have to force <laughs> muting on everyone so that the speakers can still continue to speak. Carly J. Corp. Sarah R. Crane. Rosaline Custodio. Gabrielle M. Dean. Blair C. Dowdell. Tanisha Dudley. Heather N. Edlin.
Patricia and Esperos. Melinda F. Farrell. Kimberly V. Gonzalez. Catherine Goss. Alyssa Gray. Adrian Guerrero Villarreal. Cariana Hernandez. Harry Hobson. Darnell Ortolano. Carla N. Jackson. Victoria Janaszewski. Stephanie Jenkins Whipple. Janae M. Jones. Sierra Jones. Tilashmi Kafle. Amanda Leonard. Tabitha M. Long. Brianna Maloney. Danielle McCarthy. Emma B. Miller. Sabrina Myers. Emma Norris. Abina Uwarama Otri Achimpong. Abina is the recipient of the Academic Achievement in Nursing Award. Veronica G. Olson. Anna Nicole. L. Pagala. Lauren A. Parker. Caitlin Permenter. Grace. E. 
prelog. Taylor M. Richards. Lori N. Rushworth. Sylvia Sarnecki. Chelsea Sauer. Kristen Schock. Elizabeth Sale. Gary L. Templeman. Barry is also the recipient of the Achievement in Nursing Award. Tina Thompson. India Vareen. Christine E. Vermillion. Kelly Violet. Adam Warner. Lauren Welch. Amber N. Wanger. Yay! Shannon, Shannon Wanger. Monique N. Wiseman. Kaylee Summer Wood. Wow, an amazing group. So now what we'd like to do, and hopefully it won't break the system, is invite all of our graduates to go on video screen so you can show yourselves to all of your friends and family for a minute, wave to them. Friends and family, you can unmute and cheer for them really loudly if you want to for a minute. Jeanette! Yay! 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 Congratulations. Oh, Blair. No, I don't know. Congratulations. Oh, baby. Some of you. Oh, move out, Blair. I'm just able to. Junior executives. Hey, Congratulations, everybody. I am on. You did it, girl. Oh, she won't <laughs> <it>. yes, <laughs> it. 
All right, congratulations, everybody. That was awesome. If you can go ahead and make sure that your videos are off again, we have a couple more things that we wanna share with you. Um, most importantly, your uh, reflections from your student speaker. So right now I want to introduce to you Ms. Sherry Templeman, who was selected by the graduating class to provide her reflections of their class. Can you see me? Yes. Awesome. I also was playing with the digital backgrounds. Okay, hopefully I get through this. I wanna start by thanking you, our family, friends and loved ones, for sacrificing time with us while we buried our heads into med search textbooks. Thank you for embracing us as we panicked over checkoffs, for letting us take your blood pressure over and over again, wondering why we had to be taught how to wash our hands. Thank you for listen, listening to us sob over the phone when all you could understand was a breathless, I failed. Never doubting that we would dust ourselves off and try again. Thank you for motivating us to keep going through something we called trends, and you didn't really understand what it was, but you knew it was very important. Thank you to the tremendous faculty and clinical instructors here at CSM for your open doors, compassionate hearts, and commitment to teaching the future of nursing. You have shaped our vision of what nursing should be, what it can be, and we, are tr we truly could not have made it here without you. Thank you to my peers for trusting me to speak on your behalf for such an important milestone in our lives. I hope that my reflections are worthy of your experience and at least earn a 75% on your rubric. 2020, the year of the nurse, who could have imagined that we'd begin, when we began our, our journey of nursing, that we would be joining the ranks of nurses during such a defining year for our profession and who would have thought that we would be doing it by Zoom? If you had a pinning ceremony by Zoom on your nursing school bingo card, congratulations, you win. I really struggled to write this speech to prepare these words. So I did what I do best, I studied. I researched speeches from famous leaders, celebrities, looking for a pattern, a formula for reflection. How could I possibly summarize the time? time spent with classmates and acquaintances that turned into time spent with friends and colleagues. Time that I will look back on and reflect as one of the most significant periods of growth in my life. It was during our first, it was during our first few days of nursing school that I realized how special this cohort was and how special it was to be part of such an amazing community of students, of nurses. One of my favorite quotes from Florence Nightingale is, let us run the race where we all may win, rejoicing in their successes as our own and mourning their failures wherever they are as our own. We are all one nurse. I've tried so hard to live my nursing journey through this quote. I was not here to win or to be the best. I was here for all of us to win for all of us to be the best nurse we could. The world we are entering is not the same world when we began our journey. The world needs nurses more than ever. The world, we are fa the world is facing new diseases and viruses. It needs skill and care. The world needs a nurse. The world is angry and hurt. It needs compassion and empathy. The world needs a nurse. The world is exposing disparities that exist even today. It needs advocacy. The world needs a nurse. The world needs you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel to change the direction of the car. You just need the courage to get in the driver's seat and put your foot on the gas. So before we part one last time, I'd like to leave you with one last nursing care plan. This one is for you though. Readiness for enhanced knowledge related to successful completion of nursing school as evidenced by statements of, oh my gosh, you guys, we actually did this. And what's an ATT? How do I get one? And Kaplan is how long? That's six hours. Are you kidding? Objective data includes observed personal growth, 
evident through the commitment to lifelong learning and evidence-based practice, and a promise to bring honor to the most trusted profession. Interventions include passing the NCLEX, getting that BSN, and always being proud to say that you graduated from the College of Southern Maryland. The nurses have been left with the bed in the lowest position, the table at the bedside, and the call bell within reach. I'm so honored to be among you. Thank you. As always, I can't ever listen to a student speech without getting teary. And that one was particularly moving. Um, I hope as graduates, you keep those words in mind and use that call bell as you need it to reach out to each other. Don't lose touch of each other um, as you move forward into your nursing profession. And now we'd like to wrap up today with some closing remarks from Professor Linda Goodman. Oh my gosh, you guys just rock it. I mean, I am so proud of each and every one of you. I did prepare a couple of uh, closing remarks and I did do a little research too. In the book, Unlocking the Secret of Success, written in 2018 by Anish Sharma, he quotes Florence Nightingale. He says, take responsibility for your life and you will take control of, and take control of your life. Accept the challenge required to get where you want to be. Successful people don't make excuses or blame others. They just focus on what they can do and what they have. As Florence Nightingale once said, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuses. Those who succeed in this world aren't those who have escaped hardship. Every one of us carries our own baggage through life. But each of you have preserved and you've pushed forward without the weight of those excuses holding you down. Accept and find happiness in your accomplishment. You work hard for this moment and you deserve it. In this time of uncertainty and change as your faculty, family, and friends, we applaud and admire your commitment and fortitude to carry that lamp of compassion, caring, community, and trust onward. Great job, guys. Congratulations. Thanks, Professor Goodman. This concludes our ceremony for this evening. Again, not quite what we had planned in March, but I think absolutely fabulous. I loved the individual slides that each graduate got to make. We'll be sharing those as a group and we'll also have the Zoom link recording that we'll share with everyone. So you'll have that to look back on. So congratulations, everyone. We absolutely wish you all the best as you move forward in your careers. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you.